everyone. Welcome to another video. Today I'm going to be sharing with you a quick get well card with Joy Claire's new Mana from Heaven stamp set. Now this is part of the Joy Claire stamps new release. There is a block hop going on right now if you're watching this when I post the video. Make sure you head to the link down below in the description box. Leave a comment on all of the stops along the way including the Joy Claire stamps blog and you will be entered into a giveaway for a Joy Claire gift card and those giveaways are always the winners are always posted at the end of the month on the Joy Claire blog. Now here's a look at this new stamp set. This is from the Color by Face series. I'm going to be pairing it with one of the everyday stamp sets from the line called Get Well Wishes and I'm going to create a Get Well card. Now I love the Manna from Heaven stamp set for Bible journaling and I will be using it for that but I wanted to share another idea with you. And I have three requirements when I make a get well card. One, it's got to be quick to make. And that includes adhesive dry time. That includes any sort of embellishment that I put on it. It's got to be quick and done in like 25 minutes or less. This card took about 20 minutes to make. I also want it to be relatively flat for mailing purposes. A lot of get well cards need to go through the mail. And my mailbox closes pretty early in the day, so a lot of times I don't have time to get up there and pay for that extra postage that's needed. So I need to be able to drop this in the mailbox and just know that it's going to go through safely. So I'm going to start off with this soup can stamp set from the Mana from Heaven set, and I'm going to do some masking. Now if you're making this for a more religious person, you don't need to do this masking, but I just wanted this to be good for whoever I wanted to send it to. So I'm going to go ahead and mask off that mana word that is in the top part of the soup can. I'm also, or excuse me, the from heaven words in the top part, and then the mana in the very bottom. Now I am doing this with painter's tape. If you don't have painter's tape, you can use post-it notes. You can also just ink up your stamp very carefully and not do any masking whatsoever. You can also ink up the entire stamp and then just wipe away the parts of the ink you don't want. It's super simple, a lot of different ways you can do this. This is just one of my favorite ways to change up the look of stamps and make them work for me. I'm gonna be using Memento Gray Flannel Ink to stamp. I'll be coloring in with my alcohol markers and all Memento inks do work with your alcohol markers, just in case you're wondering. This is the Dewdrop ink pads. They're a little bit smaller. They're kind of like Memento's mini ink pads. So you get a little ink pad for just a little bit of money and you can really get a lot of colors that way. I'm inking up that stamp right over the top of that painter's tape. And I'll go ahead and remove that painter's tape once I know my stamp is good and inked up. Now I do not want to do all this masking again. So I am using my Mini Misty and I'm going to make sure I get a really good impression the first time. So I'm going to flip this over onto my paper. This paper measures three inches by four and a quarter, I believe. I went ahead and just cut that out with my paper trimmer and this is plain white cardstock. I'm going to go ahead and press that down, make sure I give it some really good pressure. So that way when I lift it up, I've got a stamped image that is awesome the first time. I don't need to do any more masking. I did get a little smudge in the right hand corner. I'll show you how I fix that in a moment. Now with that Get Well Wishes stamp set from the Everyday line, I'm going to go ahead and build up the Sending Prayer sentiment. I'll go ahead and line that up using the grids on my Misty, and I'm going to use VersaFine Onyx Black Ink to stamp this down. It's great for sentiments. It does a really good job of getting a nice rich black ink that's nice and solid the first time. So I'll stamp that down in the very bottom. And with that smudge, I'm just gonna take a sanding block. This is actually for your nails, but you can find them at any beauty supply store. And I just go over that smudged area very lightly. You don't wanna use the roughest unless it's really soaked into the paper, use a smoother side and then go up from there if you need to. Now I just basically sand away the color and then that smudge is gone. I can go ahead and start coloring. Like I said, I'm using my alcohol markers. I use Dick Blick Studio brush markers. There will be a link down below if you're interested in those. I also have a review on these. I'll leave that in the top right hand corner if you want to check that out, but I'm doing very, very simple coloring and I'm going to really speed through this because it is nothing fancy whatsoever. 
I'm using three different colors of reds on the top of this soup can, and I'm going for a Campbell soup can kind of look, if you couldn't tell. Um, I start off with my lightest, and I build up from there. Uh, sometimes it's not the best idea to do that with reds. I just keep it away from the line a little bit, so that way if I do get any bleeding, it's going to stay inside the lines. Also, if you do get bleeding, you can use your colorless blender to push it back in, or once it's completely dry, you can take a white gel pen and go over the spots that might have seeped out the side a little bit. That's a great way to cover up any mistakes. I'm coming in with my medium color, just flicking in from the sides toward the center, and then I'll do my very darkest color on the outside edges once that's all done. So coming in from the very outside and flicking in towards the center. Once I get the darkest color on, I'll come back in with my medium color, blend out through that, and then I come in with my lightest color when that's all done. Like I said, very, very, very simple coloring. Now with the Dick Blick Studio brush markers, you can see my tip is bent just a little bit. My daughter got a hold of this marker. If you do have any problems like that, the Copic nibs do fit in these. So if you have any problems like that, and I know Dick Blick doesn't have their own nibs, but the Copic nibs, nibs do fit in these. I'm finally coming in with that very lightest color, just blending all the way through, and then I'll move on to my gray colors. For my soup down at the bottom, I'm gonna go ahead and color that in gray. I'm also gonna color in the can with some gray, just to give it that nice, um, authentic look. And also that's why I went in with gray ink on this. I didn't want to go in with straight black. I wanted it to be a little bit more realistic looking. That's why I came in with my gray flannel memento ink instead of straight black. Now in the center, I am using some very golden yellows. Um, the center of the Campbell's can is a golden color. So that's why I went with those colors. Also on the white part, instead of just leaving it plain white, I'm coming in with a very, very light gray on the sides, flicking in towards the center. I'm not blending it out or anything, just leaving it like that. Now I created a quick mask with a post-it note. I just needed the bottom of this, so I've got that masked off. And I used some painter's tape to mask off right where that can kind of would meet the surface, would meet the um, where it's sitting on. And I also masked off the sentiment. I'm gonna create a little bit of a shadow just by moving the painter's tape. And this is super simple and easy to do with your distress inks. I am using Hickory Smoke Distress Ink and my mini ink blending tool. You can use a finger dauber, whatever you have on hand to get that color on there. I've got a little bit of a shadow now and I'm gonna come back up and just blend it all together to make sure I don't have any harsh lines. This is a great way to add just that little bit of detail so your card doesn't look so awfully plain. Now on the inside, I'm gonna use that same Get Well Wishes stamp set and I've got the Feel Better and then right underneath that, I will stamp soon to build up my sentiment. And for stamping with this, I'm using that same Versafine Onyx Black ink. Super simple and easy to do. I'm not adding any images on here. I'm just keeping it nice and clean. Now to put this card together, I am gonna use some strong adhesive. Like I said, my cards need to hold up to go through the mail and also, when it's a super simple card like this, you don't want it to fall apart. So make sure you use good adhesive because then it just, it looks bad, if, especially if you're doing a very clean and simple card like this. So take that extra time and effort and use some good adhesive. Now I'm gonna pop that panel up just to add a little bit of dimension. I matted the colored panel onto a gray panel that was slightly larger. And then on the back of that gray panel, I'm gonna be using some fun foam and double-sided adhesive. That way it doesn't get smushed while it goes through the mail as well. I'll line that up in the very center of an A2 top folding white card face that I made, and that will finish off this card. It literally took no more than 20 minutes with coloring, with cutting the mask, with everything. It was so easy to do. That does it for me today. Here are a few final looks at this card. Hard. I absolutely love the way it turned out, and I cannot wait to use this stamp set for Bible journaling as well. Be sure to head to that link down below. Leave your comment along all the stops so you're entered into the giveaway. There are a few links on the left side of your screen. As always, thank you guys for watching, and happy crafting.